Thanks, Jack. One of the key matchups tonight was going to be the watch the goaltenders. That's had a little bit of a shakeup. I'll tell you about that in a second. First off, for OSU, Tommy Napier has been Mr. Consistent for the Buckeyes. He was named goaltender of the year last year in the Big Ten, and he just seems to turn it up when he plays the Spartans in four career games against MSU. He's 3-0-0 with a .3 goals against average. On the other side, John Leatherman, we expected him to start tonight. Instead, it will be Drew DeRitter. The rumors circling around is that John Leatherman is sick. So it will be the sophomore DeRitter in. That's a big loss for the Spartans as John Leatherman leads the Big Ten in save percentage right now. And MSU haven't beaten Ohio State home at Munn Ice Arena since 2015. We'll see if DeRitter can help them change that tonight. Jack and David, up to you. The round of 64 kicked off tonight in March Madness, and it's the 1 and 16, the 2 and 15 seeds. But tonight at Williamson High School, in a battle for the CAAC Red, it was more like a Final Four matchup. And for Parma Western, it was 14 years of waiting. But tonight, after a win over Harper Creek to clinch the conference championship, the wait for them is all over. And you can tell these celebrations you're about to see, they're 14 years in the making. Post game from Munn Ice Arena, Ian Gilmore for BTM Plus alongside Tommy Napier. Tommy, congrats on the win. You're now 4-0-0 against MSU in your career. Two shutouts, your goals against clip and save percentage clip is exceptional. What's been the key to that success for you? Uh, I mean, I got to give credit to my team. I mean, they're just keeping them to the outside, just keeping them outside and letting me see the shot always. And, I mean, I'm just trying my hardest to not give up a rebound when they're keeping them to the outside there. And I mean, they're a great team over there and we've played four great games against them so far when I've been in the net. What worked so well tonight, and how can you continue that into Saturday's game tomorrow? I mean, I'm just trying to play my game out there, just stay on the top of the crease, no rebounds out there, be square to the puck. And I mean, my team always helps me out, keep them on the outside again, and just let me see every puck with no traffic in front of the net. This win takes you guys into third place in the Big Ten. Are you as a team where you need to be come postseason time, or is there still work to be done? I mean, obviously, we want to be in first place, but we've hit some bumps in the road throughout the year, but we're just sticking with our game because we know when we play our game we're one of the best teams and we're very hard to beat congrats on the win good luck tomorrow signing off from btn plus i'm ian gilmore thanks for watching vidal kovac still waiting to come back in for michigan state salah coming on for the injury hunter moore sends it long towards alex sharenberg we've seen sharenberg a lot more in the defensive roles typically at right back this season but today playing a more forward right midfield sort of role jacob cromer man Hard to take the ball off him, but sends the pass awry, past the feet of Mutatu. Wisconsin sends it forward. Salah brings it down on the far side. A sloppy bit of play from both sides in the middle of midfield. Bilek comes forward. Trying to send Wampler in behind. Morse taking... All the time he can off the clock. That play started with him coming out of the D and ending up picking it up in the back corner. Of well, the I love how he throws it out within a second of picking it up, too. <laughs> Salah making a run inside. Connor George holds on to it, gives it to Mutatu. He loves running down that left-hand flank. Stops and turns back, gives it to Morissette. Thinks about the cross into the box. Instead, he'll play shorter to Salah. Salah one on one with Irabarin. Gives to Mutatu. Turns to his left, fakes, cuts back. Big switch to Luke Morell. Morell down to Perkins. He'll stride forward. Patch of green in front of him. Lay off to Connor George. Perkins has it back, drinks it into the box. But it goes away from him. Wisconsin clears, but only as far as Cromer. Zuge out to Salah. Jacob Cromer back to Luke Morell. He'll go for it himself, give it out to Perkins. Perkins, not a very good pass, finds the feet of Akindeli. Finnegan, Bilik, switches on if he wants it. He'll go all the way back to Klanchnik and to Ben Lees. Wisconsin easing their way forward here. Not as much urgency as you may expect to see. With six minutes left and down two goals. Yeah, and Akindele, a near side, not quite sure if he's nursing an injury or something. Connor George was in on goal, and he gives it to an offside 
or excuse me, Nick Stone gives it to an offside Connor George, but he was fouled before the offside came. So Michigan State has a free kick in a very dangerous area. About six yards outside the box in prime position for a right footer. This is the territory we saw the initial fake play to Nick Stone. Yes. A few games back. So he is back by the, the center circle, so I, I don't think he'll be hitting this one unless he sneaks his way forward. Nice. Salah set the ball. Looks like he has full intention of taking it for I not. Rotata not look like he's taken. Salah over the wall. Oh, my word. What a finish. When you've got a last name like that, you score goals like that. Louis Sala, take a bow. Number 23, Louis Sala. Sensational. And he tried a few efforts from distance earlier on in the game. They were blocked before they were able to get towards the goal. But just a great free kick there. You could tell the whole way through it was going to be him to take it. And he showed exactly why that was a good decision. Up and over the wall. Nothing Abbott could do about it. And pitched the game to bed. First wow. Game of the season. You know, I was about to say, too, that wall didn't look like it was 10 yards away. So getting that up and down in the way he did was very impressive. And Connor George. Gets a yellow card for time wasting while the clock is not running. Not sure that's exactly a thing. So maybe just reflex by the ref. I I guess so. <laughs> Vadad Kovac is on in place for Connor George. Four one five minutes to go. It'll take a miracle now for Wisconsin, Michigan State's largest. Goal output in quite some time. Kellen Landefeld will come on. Not his first appearance this season, but he doesn't have too many minutes, less than 20 for him on the season. I believe Jack Zuge was the one that went off so that Landefeld could come on. Luis Sala will finally, we're going to finally see him in the, the center of the park more instead of the, the wings. Yeah, you know, Adam, I know you have said you think he's more of a guy that should play in the central of the park or even behind a striker rather than on the wing. Yeah, I think just his style of play fits more with open space rather than being against the sideline and really having to go at defenders one-on-one. -on -one. I think he's more of a, you know, he's more about moving the ball than dribbling. And he showed some of his final product on that set piece just a second ago. And, I mean, he's coming back into the midfield with full confidence after that goal. Not much time left, but... It's a word we've said a lot today. Yeah. Is a lot of these guys are getting more and more confidence. Is yeah, this four first-time scorers on the season today? With hey, how about some more? Sternberg coming forward. Tries to play it in the middle. Vidad Kovac has it. Cuts it back, but it's blocked well there from Kronchnich. Last time Michigan State scored four goals, Adam. September 10th, 2018 against Oakland, a team that I am sure Luke Morrell was in. <laughs> Wonder if any of the players are gonna do their research and tell them about that. Nasty challenge there. Will Perkins goes down under the challenge of Wampler. But this is a performance we haven't seen from Michigan State in a long time. And she's on the ball to start this second half. Gives it down low to Davis. Pops out to Castro. Castro left hand dribble into the paint. Oh, and almost goes down, but she'll get the foul. Going to the line for two. Castro, one of those uh, players for NIU that doesn't shoot from the free throw line too well. 67% on the season, the redshirt senior. A great story though, Paulina Castro. Had Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2017, battled through it, came back, played 31 games that next season, and it's really great just to see her on the court. It's incredible, super inspiring, and the whole community really rallied around her. And that season that she came back and played 31 of the 32, like you said, she also had her career high that season, 14 points for Chicago State on 12-21. Aral inside to Parks. Bouncing up with that left hand, and that one's good.
Castro working on Osmond. Down low to Davis. She faces up against Parks. Some help defense in there from Aral. Parks, good defense, and she grabs the rebound. Davis being such a strong player, I think it would have been a lot better for her to plant that other foot and go up off two feet instead of the kind of fade away, away from the hoop and swing the ball up. Turnover from Michigan State. Coker the other way. Pulls up, long three, off the rim, short. But they grab the rebound. Good defense by Osmond. They're really looking to keep the ball in Coker's hands, and Osmond's right there at all times. Coker spinning, turning, but a block by Osmond. Winston the other way. She's got help with Cloudin. Gives it to Cloudin, puts it up and in, but an offensive foul against Winston. So that's her third. Now Winston and Cloudin both with three fouls early on in the second half. That's tough, here's that one again. She keeps moving forward. And I mean, good defensive thinking right there. She took the fall. I don't think Winston went into her super hard, but she knows that Winston had two and she didn't get to play much of the first for it. Hey, let's take advantage of that and see if we can get a third on her. And Susie Merchant's gonna trust her, keep her in the game for now. Coker against Osmond. A little tumble down low of Davis as she goes against Ruers. Now Coker driving into the paint, trying to go up, but another good block from Osmond. Winston coming back again. Clouded out top. The three from the corner. No good. Rebound Aralt. Whistle on the floor. Foul's going to be on Castro. Oh, excuse me, Brandon. Winston inbounding from below the basket. Close to that five second mark. Osmond grabs the inbounds pass. Ruers the long two, no good. Brandon comes down with the rebound, gives it to Coker. Brandon averaging more than double her minutes from last year. She has 26 minutes per game when last year she was only averaging about 11. Davis drives, fades away, puts the shot up, but an offensive foul. Davis keeps fading away from the basket when she's down low in the paint. Not typical of her, she normally heads right in and goes straight at the basket. Ruers down low, nice catch off the dribble, but she can't finish it. Aralt goes up, can't finish that one either. Just two points for either team so far in this second half, almost three minutes into it. Grace Hunter with it in the corner. Again, Davis faces up Ruers. Goes up with that right hand. Nice finish off the glass for two. Ruers ha was having a hard time getting her positioning against her down low. Cloudon to Winston. Osmond goes across to Aral. Back inside to Osmond. The finish off the glass and in. Nice finish, Tori Osmond. Good finish by Osmond had actually missed a wide open cut from Winston right before that, but hit Osmond on the cut and she took a, a little bit harder of a contested shot instead, but it went in. Coker, nice drive, left hand finish is good. Coker really picking up that intensity now and she's, she's in the game, she's getting in the zone and she's gonna really start putting some numbers up. Four for 10 from the field now for Coker. Osmond. Inside to Ruers. Ruers with that length is just so big. She lays it in for two. And Susie Merger really tries getting the to get the post used to not putting a dribble down. Just getting the pass inside and going right up. 6-4. Ruers has three inches over Asia Davis, who stands at 6-1. Hunter to Castro. They'll give it to Davis. She faces up Ruers. Shot clock winding down, pops it out to Coker. Nice hand there from Clouded. Coker gets it back though, puts it up off the glass, can't finish and that one never hit the rim so it's a shot clock violation. If it hit the rim, she was ready for the weak side rebound, went up, it went in, but no basket for that one. Crooms checking in for the first time in this second half. Check out that nice finish from Osmond. Ah, 
Osmond. And then check that one out again to Ruers. Osmond went from 5.3 points per game last year to 8.2 this year. She's also adding two extra rebounds and 4.4 assists per game from one assist per game last year. Aroll doesn't get that one to go down. Bostic checked in for Ruers, by the way. She fought for that one. It'll be Michigan State ball. Joiner also back into the game for the Spartans. Ruers, is a graduate senior, sometimes getting a hard time with the easy bunny. Osmond fakes the three, fakes this pull-up jumper. She'll give it to Aroll. Aroll to Joiner. Joiner drives that left hand, goes up short. No good, but the whistle goes. On a night when the sports world seemed to stand still, the rock at MSU sits in silence. It's crazy, crazy. It still hasn't settled in. A big thing that I thought about today was like life just isn't fair. Like, did he, he doesn't deserve this. Does not deserve this. NBA superstar Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven other passengers died in a helicopter crash. Because it's Kobe, you know, you, you can't, you, you know, you got that picture of him, he's like, he can't die, you know? I mean, right when I found out, I thought it was just a rumor, kind of like, you know, a publicity stunt, just a headline. These MSU students came to pay their respects. I just, I gathered all these guys and I said, no, let's, let's just do it. In the only way they knew they could. Directly after, like literally as soon as we got done, somebody rolled up right behind us and they came and took a picture with us. So that was kind of cool. Personally, he's a hero of mine. Just the Mamba mentality, having that mentality and, and you know, going hard as you can, giving everything you have. It, it's it's so important, not only with sports, but with your schoolwork, with anything that you put your mind to, having that mentality, it's, it's, it's another level. But Kobe's influence spread beyond just the sport he played. Kind of like, you know, just remembering him, like who he was as a person beyond basketball. He, he showed loyalty, determination, his whole story, how he came up is, you know, it's bigger than basketball. His voice has gone silent now. You know, I think people just kind of Really, they, they, they realize that, you know, you can only appreciate something so much until it's gone. But his legacy will be carried on by his fans all over the world. Steadfast, inspirational, magnificent, loyalty, hard worker. Oh, Kobe Bryant, when you have nothing left, you still give more. In East Lansing, I'm Ian Gilmore. First of all, if I could get you to scan the QR code on our sign. While the seats at Jackson Field are empty. Say we rewind to a couple of years ago, yes. we would see these seats filled with Lansing Lugnuts fans. You can still hear a ball being hit. Except it's a golf ball in a baseball stadium. The opportunity to hit golf balls on a, onto a baseball field, that's few and far between. Because the lug nut season is starting later than usual, they're trading in the baseball bats at Jackson Field for golf clubs. It's not like the fan is swinging the bat. It's not like the fan is throwing the pitch. And here you are directly involved. All right, gentlemen, you can head on down. Matt Hicks is the lug nuts director of retail. We'll, uh, we'll collect your scores at the end. He designed it all from the names. We call it our, our hackers hot corner. Aces and bases, Luggy's lucky lob shot. To the logistics. We needed over 7,000 golf balls on hand. If anybody gets a hole in one, we have awesome prizing to give away for those. Uh, we have prizes for our grand champion, which also includes a red blazer that we're gonna award. Pretty close, I'll take it. I'd love to everybody have your own scorecard to take home at the end. Matt does it all for one reason. Get in the cup. It's just very gratifying. Uh, to see the enjoyment that families, individuals uh, experienced yesterday and definitely will today through Sunday. In Lansing, Ian Gilmore, Focal Point News.